I'm Dr. Suki and welcome to AP Biology Test Prep. Today we will be reviewing two questions from the AP Biology exam. You must read each question completely and thoroughly before answering, and all answers must be in essay format. Diagrams may be used, however, in no case will a diagram alone suffice to answer a question. So let's get started, shall we? An experiment on small freshwater fish recorded their behavioral responses to different temperatures. Ten fish were each tested, one at a time. Fish were removed from a stock tank maintained at 22 degrees Celsius, then placed in the temperature gradient tank below. The location of the fish were recorded after the fish spent 30 minutes in the tank, then every five minutes thereafter for a total of seven observations per fish. Before plotting this data, we need to determine which type of graph to make. There are several types of graphs, including bar graphs, pie charts, line graphs, uh, but in this case, because we're looking at a discrete range of temperatures and the amount of fish that are present which in, within these discrete range of temperatures, the best type of graph to use would therefore be a type of bar graph called a histogram. On the x-axis, we're going to be plotting our independent variable, which is the temperature in degrees Celsius. And on the y-axis, we're going to be plotting the number of fish, because the number of fish will change dependent upon the specific range of temperature. Your histogram should look something like this. On the x-axis, we see the temperature gradient is represented in the unit of measurement of degrees Celsius. Since temperature can be measured in more than one unit, you must put a unit of measurement on the x-axis. On the y-axis, we see that we just have number of fish, because there's only one way to measure the number of fish, and that's by counting the number of fish. So on the y-axis, we have the number of fish, and on the x-axis, we have temperature in degrees Celsius. Not Fahrenheit and not Kelvin, Celsius. Now, let's talk about major and minor units for a second. You have to make sure on every graph that you make that you have both major units and minor units, especially if your measurements do not fall on the major unit. In this case, our major unit are, is in units of five, and the minor units are represented in units of one. And that is for both axes, as we can see here. Now we simply went through and plotted each of these values here corresponding to the appropriate temperature gradient. And that's how we got our histogram. The second part of the first question asks to summarize the data, that is, summarize the observation that we made. So what we can say about this histogram and the migration of the fish in the tank is that most of the fish migrated to the part of the tank that was more temperate, meaning that they migrated to the part of the tank that was an intermediate temperature between the two extremes. On one end, we have almost freezing cold temperatures, and on the other end, we have what may be a little warmer than an air-conditioned room, but the fish prefer to be right in the middle, and that's all we have to say about this graph. 1b asks us to identify two variables that were not controlled and how these variables might affect the experimental outcome. A variable is anything that's going to change during your experiment and may or may not affect the outcome of your experiment. So we would like to control anything that we can, any variable that we can, so that our outcome is not going to be, be dependent upon those external factors and will be dependent only upon the thing that we are changing. In this case, uh, the temperature from 2 degrees Celsius to 27 degrees Celsius was well controlled and was changed uh, according to the section of the tank. Some things that were not controlled were the physical characteristics of the fish. During no time did the passage mention whether or not we were using male or female fish, for example. Now why is this important? Well, you can imagine that if the fish were of mating age and we put both male and female fish into the tank, they could be chasing each other around the tank simply because they want to mate, not because of the temperature gradient. And so that could affect the outcome of the experiment. The next is schooling. Well, the passage didn't say anything about taking the fish out of the tank once they were placed in the tank. So if we assume that all of the fish are still in the tank, 
then it is possible that the fish are going to aggregate in portions of the tank uh, in a manner that is not um, necessarily dependent upon the temperature. Uh, we know that fish like to aggregate, they like to school, and they like to flit across a tank in groups. And so um, that could definitely affect the outcome of this experiment. The next is the placement of the fish in the tank. Let's say that the fish uh, were at the 22 degrees Celsius holding tank and then placed at 2 degrees Celsius, which is equivalent to an ice cold glass of water. Now, I don't know about you, but if I were a fish and I were placed from an air conditioned room to an ice cold glass of water, I'd want to get away from that environment as quickly as possible. And I'd probably fly across this tank as quick as I could. But here's the thing. What if you put the fish from the 22 degrees Celsius holding tank into the 22 degrees Celsius part of this gradient tank? Now, I don't think they'd want to go anywhere. And so you see where we place the fish in the gradient tank is going to make a difference as to where they uh, potentially migrate in the tank. The next thing is the time of day. Why does this matter? Because of circadian rhythms. Circadian rhythms are internal biological clocks that tell animals when to wake, when to sleep, when to be active, when to not be active, etc. And so there are different types of organisms. Some are diurnal, meaning that they're active during the day. Some are nocturnal, meaning that they're active primarily at night. And some are crepuscular, which is a term you don't hear too often, but this means that animals like to be active during twilight hours, such as uh, sunlight, uh, dusk or dawn. And so uh, these are some of the variables that were not controlled that could affect the possible outcome of this experiment.